A few days ago, Sabine Hosenfelder posted a video claiming that neuroscientists have measured qualia for the first time. And it has to be the very worst video that I have ever seen on the topic of qualia. And it is a great example of what many people who are scientifically inclined get wrong about consciousness and qualia in general. In case you don't know, Sabine Hosenfelder is a physicist and a YouTuber who is quite famous for explaining scientific concepts in her channel. At one point in time her videos were mostly about physics, which is her area of expertise, but recently she has gone on to entertain broader issues related to science and knowledge. As you would imagine, Sabine is generally of the view that consciousness is a field of study that can be examined by scientists just like any other field. And the video she just posted demonstrates exactly why she has this view, which is that she fundamentally misunderstands the concept of consciousness. At the start of her video she gives a brief introduction into the concept of qualia. In case you don't know, the term qualia refers to the elements of our subjective conscious experience. For example, when we say that an apple is red, in terms of physics we may mean that it happens to absorb certain kinds of light, but in terms of qualia, when we say that an apple is red, we mean that when we look at it, there is a specific subjective experience that we have. Red, in this case, is not referring to the physical facts about the object, but to the kind of experience that we have of it. It is referring to its redness, as we might say. So, having established this definition, let's look at Sabine's claims. In her video, Sabine presents a research study in which a team of neuroscientists compared the brain activity of 35 participants who were looking at different colors. The aim of the study was to establish whether the viewing of specific colors corresponded to specific patterns of brain activity that are similar across different individuals. The results showed that there was indeed a statistically significant correlation between the patterns within the brains of the participants. Sabine then makes the bold claim that this was quote-unquote the first time that researchers have been able to objectively measure qualia, and that their findings demonstrated that your experience of red is the same as my experience of red. Now, I know that everyone who has ever read anything about the hard problem of consciousness understands that these claims are insane, and that, in fact, they just showcase her lack of understanding of the concept of qualia. But before I tackle her position, let me say a few things that are relevant to this issue. First of all, this is by no means the first research that demonstrates similarities in brain activity in response to specific stimuli. If you had taken even a single undergraduate course in neuroscience, you would know that there are specific areas that exist in most normal brains which correspond to the perception of specific stimuli. For example, the fusiform face area is known to respond specifically to the sight of faces, or objects that resemble faces. The auditory cortex is mapped tonotopically, which means that specific tones excite specific neurons. This is by no means a new or original discovery in the world of neuroscience. We know that most brains function in similar ways for similar functions, including the perception of stimuli. But this has nothing to do with the hard problem of consciousness, and is in fact a perfect demonstration of one of the easy problems of consciousness. The easy problems of consciousness are problems like how the brain functions, when it is conscious, or which areas in the brain become activated when a given stimuli is perceived. These are easy problems because they are clearly solvable with our current methodologies. We can use an fMRI or other kinds of brain scans to see where neurons fire and where they don't. 
the hard problem of consciousness is this. How is it that this brain activity gives rise to subjective experience? How is it that the movement of electrical signals or impulses and chemical substances give rise to qualia like redness? Showing that a cluster of neurons fire when you see the color red is not an explanation of how red actually looks like in your subjective experience. It's just like the problem of analyzing the properties of light to explain redness. Yes, it is true that when we have the experience of redness, we look at objects that are affected by specific properties of light. And it is also true that we experience redness when a specific number of neurons fire in our brains. But this tells us nothing about the actual experience of redness. It just gives us a description of the things that happen when this experience takes place. It is an analysis of correlation between brain activity and perception, but not a demonstration of experience itself. It says, here is what happens in your brain when you experience this color, but not, here is a demonstration of what the experience of the color is. In the case of Sabine Hosenfelder, I can attack her position without even having to tell you anything about the heart problem of consciousness as well, because she doesn't give any attention to possible interpretations of the study that are different to the interpretation of, well, we have just measured qualia. First of all, when you measure brain activity in relation to the perception of a stimulus, you have to take into account that a stimulus and the perception of it has many different layers to it. For example, when it comes to an object, there is the information about the object, there is the seeming of the object or the subjective experience of it, but there is also other things like where that project, that object, excuse me, is categorized within your whole schema of objects and stuff like that. So, for instance, it can be entirely possible that you have different brain regions that respond to different stimuli, like colors, because you have certain categories under which those colors go. So, when you perceive a red stimulus, the area that corresponds to the category red may become stimulated, but that would have nothing to do with redness itself. It would simply have to do with the category that you call red. But even if we take her interpretation as the correct one, which is that, you know, we found those neurons that fire when you have the qualitative or the subjective experience of red, we still don't see any account of that experience. If we had a robot with, say, light detectors, and we programmed it in a way that it categorizes certain colors as red, green, etc., then you could literally find the exact point in its programming where the perception of red happens. But nobody would assume that this machine has actual consciousness. Nobody would assume that it has the experience of red. Similarly, how do we know from this study that the subjects actually had the subjective experience of red? All of these studies that try to make correlations between the firing of neurons and the perception of stimuli run into this exact problem. There is no space in the study in which subjective experience is in any ways an explanatory factor. You can explain the entire experiment without assuming that anyone has conscious experience at all. You have a stimulus, and then the visual cortex receives the information about that stimulus, and then you have certain firings of neurons because that stimulus has a specific color or a specific texture or whatever, and that's it. There is no subjective experience there. It's just the reception of a stimulus as a stimulus. The question of the hard problem of consciousness is how it is that this firing of these neurons and this reception of those uh, stimuli 
produce subjective experience or qualia, like redness. And it is this gap that creates the frustration around consciousness in the scientific community, because it is blatantly obvious to us that we have subjective experience, because we experience it immediately, but there is no space in any of our studies of the brain whereby subjective experience is in any way an explanatory factor. There is no place in the brain where you can literally find redness. All you can find is neuronal firing that corresponds to the reception of stimuli. That's the gap that the hard problem of consciousness shows. And that's the gap that, unfortunately, Sabine Hosenfelder and many other scientifically minded people seem to not grasp. Thanks for watching this video, please like and subscribe and leave your comments down below.